friends, this is Fire on Pop, and uh, today I have an interest. I came across an interesting article, and this this article was in uh, Shooting Times uh, magazine. Uh, I, I always give these people credit, uh, uh, and it was called uh, Crime Lab Shooting Oddities. Crime Lab Shooting Oddities, um, and, and I'll throw a, a, a picture of the article right here. Okay, it says. One odd case the author encountered when he worked in the Dallas County Crime Lab involved two victims being killed with a single shot from a 357 Magnum revolver. The heavy 357 Magnum jacketed uh, soft point bullets used were built for penetration, not expansion, at revolver velocities. Okay. Interesting, because uh, that's really what I, I carry is a 357. Um, not a soft point, uh, but they are hollow points. Anyway, let's get on with the story. A, a big city crime lab sees a lot of firearm cases, mostly common stuff, but some turn out to be surprising. And here are a couple of the odd ones. Okay, chance shot. A woman took, <clears throat> took out a restraining order on her violent ex-boyfriend. One night, fueled by a belly full of liquid courage, I like that. He, des he decided this woman needed to die. He showed up at her apartment door, threatened to kill her, and started to break down the door. The woman called 911, but it became obvious that the local uh, constable could not arrive before the flimsy door gave way. As the, as the top of the door hinge started to fall, the terrified lady dropped the phone and grabbed a roll 22 rifle and launched around into the center of the closed door, hoping to scare off the idiot. The man, the, the noise stopped. Patrol officers arrived a few minutes later and found that what was a true ex-boyfriend a few doors down the hall, leaking, in, in, leaking the last of his mortality from a chest wound. Okay, so this sounds like a routine justifi justifiable homicide. Well, about all that was routine was the justifiable part. The 22 ribfire rifle was never fitted with conventional sights. It had a single shotgun type head. And when he looked at it closely, it was smooth bore and was marked for 22 long rifle, L, 22 LR long rifle shot shell. It was intended for an old sport of mini ski where shooters shot miniature clays at short range with the smoothbore 22 ribfire rifle and shot cartridges. The oddities continued. The wooden door clearly had a single bullet on the inside and, and a splintered, uh, nondescript exit on the outside. The rifle was a single shot bolt action and the woman had only one cartridge. Its case is still in the its case still in the chamber. No other spent uh, cases or ammo were found. The 911 operator, still on the phone, clearly heard one shot. However, the medical examiner found two bullet holes uh, close abreast in the middle of the the uh, Creedence chest. This guy uses words. <clears throat> Internally, the ME saw medical examiner saw that the one bullet had peered, pierced the heart and the other had just missed. The doctor thought he spotted one of the bullets and probed for it in what turned out to be a magnetized steel pointer. The bullet jumped into the magneti magnetic pointer and it was half a bullet. Okay. The other half was also magnetic. The signal cartridge the woman possessed was a 22 short gallery round with a uh, frag, frag, fragmentable bullet made of compressed iron powder. As nearly as we can tell, the bullets broke fore and aft and it exited the door and the two pieces landed on the drunken delinquent's chest about three quarter inch apart, uh, retaining Sorry about that. 
retaining energy to permanently enforce the restraining order. To permanently enforce the straining order. Okay, that'll permanently enforce it. Uh, another case, uh, brothers and sisters, a 22. That's all it took. Saved her life uh, and put another dirt bag into the ground. Uh, so, uh, as macho men carry 357 magnums, a 22 will do it. Uh, anything will do it that you'll carry or keep available to you. Choose your dice game carefully. A deputy from an outlying Texas county uh, brought evidence as a homicide and reviewed the materials with me. He first revealed the story. About a dozen men met in an abandoned shack for their weekly floating crap game. <clears throat> as was their custom, they had plenty of alcohol available. Law enforcement knew the game was a long-running tradition, but had little luck with finding and breaking it up. Faced with an increasing drug lab problem and too few resources, the sheriff realistically concluded that the crap game could never be high on his to-do list. An uneasy truce ensued. The truce ended one night when the reports came in to a shooting at the crap game. One of the regulars was a pleasant guy, sober, but he really uh, agitated jerk when drunk. The slurred voices in his head told him someone was cheating, okay, and he began to protest and threaten just about everyone in the shack. His companions declared the game over, and then the man pulled a long-barreled 357 Magnum revolver and started waving it around. About ten people tried rushing out of the single door, which just happened to open in. Obviously, it was a traffic jam. And then came gunfire. Two men at the door fell, but the rest of the players made it out safely. Outside, someone used the CB radio to relay a shooting report to the sheriff's office. It took the good part of an hour for the uh, lawmen to find the remote site. An hour, call 911, just took an hour to get there. This guy's running around with a 357 Magnum. Okay. Just before the law arrived, some players had returned to the shack, disarmed the shooter, and was sitting on him. Okay, they took it into their own hands. The two injured men with DRT, dead right there. I like that. DRT, dead right there. Our medical examiner downstairs had already started an exam on the victims when the deputy arrived. I checked the ME case list that morning and found that the one man had a through and through gunshot wound and entered slightly behind the left armpit area and exited forward of his right armpit. The second man had an entrance wound in almost the exact same place as the first man, but no exit. Okay. At this point, the deputy showed me the ammo removed from the revolver cylinder. It was a 357 Magnum 158 grain jacketed soft point JSP ammo. That was normal, but the round, uh, the round count threw me. There were five live rounds and one spent case. Okay, one spent case. The deputy said, "Yep, it's a twofer, two for the price of one." The same bullet had taken out both men stopping in the second at almost the same point where it had exited the first. The tip-off was an irregular entrance wound on player two. The bullet started to tip on the exit, exiting player number one and made a partial keyhole in the second victim. Those 158 grain JSPs can have a muscle velocity of over 1,350 feet per second from a six-inch barrel. And that type of shooter, shooter used was built in a pen, for penetration, not expansion. The deputy had one more zinger for me. After we, re, we reviewed the firearms evidence, he added, Oh, I should probably tell you the shooter was blind. Okay, so, dear readers, should you show up at a dice game in a shack that's 90 minutes from the nearest trauma center, has only one door, and one of the players is drunk, armed, and vision impaired, you may want to reconsider your lifestyle decisions. Amen. <laughs> okay. Amen. Anyway, I thought that interesting. 
uh, Vogel on the 22 uh, uh, end of it. Also the 357 Magnum Twofer. Okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these. Once again, uh, you can friend me on Facebook at Fire on Pop. You can uh, find me on the web at fireonpop.com. And as usual, as always, this is Fire on Pop. Uh, be safe out there and God bless. Bye now.